Okay. Well, I think we did it. Um, this is the first time we're going to do this. Um, I'm actually, I'm, I'm going to show you, I'm at our shop here today. And one of the things that we were talking about the last couple of weeks, we did uh, a series. I showed a series of videos that I filmed um, probably, I filmed them last winter. So it's been several months. But I showed them on, on Dan, a dog that we trained. And we talked about old Dan on hold conditioning. And it got really good. I thought it got really good response. I got a bunch of people that were, I think, interested in it and asking questions. And um, it wasn't a ton, but we don't have that many followers anyway. So I, I, that didn't bother me as far as the numbers. What I did like about it was there were some people that really got engaged in it, um, really asked some great questions. And so one of the things that I wanted to do, one of the things that came up was uh, one of the people recommended, I asked for people's feedback. And I said, what do you want? What do you think we could do better? And so one of the comments back was, don't film it ahead of time and do it. Uh, show us what you're doing now with the dogs. So I thought I've been thinking about doing this for, for quite a while um, with some of the dogs, and I made a lot of excuses on why not to do it. Uh, one of them was I didn't know how to go live. I literally just Googled it. So uh, you got to go to the thing, hit the button, and then you can uh, make, a, make a post live. But I didn't know that. Steph, when we had gone live before, Steph did it uh, for me. So I figured that out. So there was one excuse I had to cross off. But I think training, I make a lot of excuses of why I shouldn't do it or can't do it. And this is actually going to be for my benefit as well. I will be held accountable. Um, I'm gonna Once I start this, I'm going to have to follow through with it. And what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to show, it's kind of a, a, a follow-up too to, we did a series, and you can look back on some of our videos to, to have this make sense, but we did a video uh, with a little dog, a little yellow dog that I was training named Kimber, and we made some retrieves with her, and one of the big, I think, common things that, that people have issues with is dogs that don't deliver real well, or they run off, or they kind of take a victory lap with the, with the bumpers or dummies or whatever it is. And Kimber is a little yellow dog that is about a year old. She's a great little dog. Um, I haven't had a lot of issues with her blinking on bumpers. I haven't had a lot of issues with her dropping. Uh, she delivers real well. But I did run into recently, she decided she wanted to take off on me a little bit. We showed that in the video. I did a series of three retrieves in a row. We slowly got a little bit better with them. Well, at that point, that was a, a thing for me to understand. I have to um, fix it. And the way I'm going to fix it is with hold conditioning. And when I talked about doing that in the post, I typed it up. I had one person respond back and go, I didn't know that would fix that. I didn't know that would help. It certainly will. Um, so what we're going to do is very similar to what we did with old Dan. And so if you looked back on some of our posts, we did eight days in a row of old Dan's videos. Um, old Dan was a dog that we trained for raised hunting. They, that dog did very well, caught on very quickly. And some people commented and said, my dog won't do it that quick. Don't worry about the time. That's not the point of it. The point of it is going to be to show that it's a process, start to finish, and you, you just have to stay with it and be consistent. So I'm going to use Kimber. Kimber's very sharp. I don't expect it to take her that long. Um, but I'm going to show you literally from the start to the finish, and there will be no, there will be no refilming of anything. There's not going to be any practices. This is live. So if she makes a mistake, how do I correct it? You're going to hear some tone. You're going to hear some different things that probably are similar to what your dogs are going to do. Um, so follow along with it. Do not think that this is the pace your dog should work at. So literally, I'm here at the shop. I've got two of them with me today. I've got Ellie and Kimber. And so we're going to take Kimber, and I'm going to show you how fancy I get. Uh, this is another reason why I say don't make excuses. Um, I'm at work right now. So I've got a little bit of time. I'm going to put her up. I'm going to get a five, probably five to ten minute lesson in with her. Uh, I'm going to fit it into my schedule. Uh, this might happen in different places over the next couple of weeks. I might not be here every day. I'm not always here every day. Uh, but I'm going to have to stay consistent with it. So I'm going to bring her up, and we're literally going to put her on the table for the first time. So I'm going to bring her over, and I'm going to try to try set this up so that you guys can actually see it. So we're putting her up on literally a table. I'm going to rig it up so that we can tether her. So I'm going to take, she's got a flat collar on. I'm going to get her up. Hopefully you can see this. So I'm going to put this collar on her. And when I talk, when I work with the dogs, I don't talk a lot. But there's about my height that I need. So I'm just going to tie this off. 
for right now and make sure that she can't she can't duck out of it. So I'm going to back this up a little bit. See if you can see it better. This is the part that I don't like about it being live because I'm not real good at this. So I'm going to move some of this stuff off the table. And you can see literally all I'm doing right now is letting her settle in. And I really think she is a dog that is very quick, very sharp. She's a little bit too sharp at times, um, but really nice focus on me. I really just want to see if she's going to fuss or fight, and she's pretty calm. She really doesn't mind the idea of being on this table. Now, this, this hold conditioning is what we do instead of what some people call force fetch. You can see her focus right now, and part of it is because I'm holding on to this thing. So I'm just going to set it down right now. That's what we're going to use. We're going to use that wooden dowel. But what I'm going to do is I'm just going to let her sit up on the table and kind of check out what's going on. And see how tight, if you can see how tight her neck is right now. My, my hopes are that that will stop where she'll sit up high enough that it's not going to be tight. If I have to loosen it up a little, I will. I might do that. So these are all little adjustments that me, as the trainer, i got to read that help her have some success. So I'm gonna lower it a little bit because she's really not pulling on it. Now if she pulls on it, I'll tighten it back up. But there, there's a nice, there's a nice, that's, that's perfect. She's not pulling on it, she's not fussing with it. So again, if your dog, if you were to do this with your dog and your dog fussed and wanted to fight out of it, this is the lesson. We're just gonna stand there and wait and let them understand that they're not gonna see how she's stretching out She's going to feel a little bit of pressure and she'll likely respond to it. She, I can't, she can't get to the table. That's part of why I got her tied up. She can't quite get to the table. If she can and she starts sniffing, I'm not going to allow it, so I'll, I'll tighten that, little, that lead up a little bit so she can't reach. This is fine. I don't mind her. She's very comfortable. The reason I put them up on a table, the reason we put them up on tables is take away their confidence a little bit, make them focus on us a little bit better. Now... I'm going to pick up this wooden dowel. And the other thing I think I should look is, you're live, we're building an audience for you. So I don't know if question, if someone has questions, if you would, I think there's people watching it. But if someone has a question, um, just type that you're watching, and then I will see if it comes up or not. But because uh, I, I don't, I don't, I'm not sure exactly how to do it. But what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take the wooden dowel. My hopes are if people have questions, I can answer it during this. I thought that worked that way. Um, but I'm going to take this dowel, and I'm going to put it in her mouth. We're actually going to see how she reacts to it. I don't know if this is working. Boy, I guess it is. So now I'm going to show you. There, somebody did something. Excellent. Thank you, Kyle. Appreciate it. All right. So now I am going to put the dowel in for the first time. And I don't know how she I she's got a really nice retrieve. Uh, she never fusses with stuff. Kevin, perfect. Thank you. Um, when I put this in, she is going to likely take it. If your dog doesn't, the wrestling match will begin. Because you're going to see how excited she is. She actually wants it. So I love that. What One thing that I think the reason is, is first off, Kimber is a retrieving machine. Uh, she was started by a friend of mine, Todd, and she is a machine when it comes to retrieving. So there's no issue when it comes to her picking stuff up. What I want is, I want her to understand she's gotta get a little bit more polished with it now. So I don't see, I don't anticipate her bucking this at all. If your dog does, this is where you have to understand and, and they have to understand that this is gonna be something that they have to do. Most retrievers, you don't have to fight with them. That's why force fetching, we put a bunch of pressure on them. We're, we're putting pain, negative pressure, and turning it off when they do what we want. Well, I think that's backwards. So instead, take the dog that likes to do this and teach them that this is exactly what they want, and I can do it in a positive way. So it's our approach. To, it's our style of our approach to training. You know, we, we're, so you can see she really wants it now. She's right on the edge, and if she gets any further, she's going to come off. So I'll, this is where I'll adjust this tether. But 
First time we put it in, I, she's, you can see she's not going to fuss. She's not going to buck it. She wants it. So I actually am going to get her back a little bit because I don't necessarily want her reaching for it that hard. Ah, 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 ah. So you'll see my tone, and I'll slow down when I work with the dog. Hold, 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 hold. I want to see. I want you to see your whole body here. Hold, hold. Good, good, hold, hold. Now I don't, I'm not forcing her to do anything. She's loving this. Hold, very good, dead. Now she's not releasing real easy. Dead, dead, good. She didn't release real easy, but that's okay. You got to remember that literally was the first time she's done it. She took it, she grabbed it. So that's the, that's the good part about doing this live is She's going to make a bunch of mistakes, I'm certain of it, and we're going to have to fix it. But that was her natural instinct was just to pick it up and hold on to it, hold on to it, hold on to it. We didn't, it didn't start now. It started, oh, back when we were doing little puppy retrieves and we were doing all sorts of retrieving up till this point. You got to remember, she's a year old. Um, she's retrieved a long time. The reason I haven't done this yet is because she hasn't told me she needed it. The other day when she ran off, I said, it's time to fix that. We, and this will help. So her, when she retrieves to us, if you're not to hold conditioning, and don't hold condition until they're at unteething, so you're talking at least six months old. So if the hold conditioning, if they're not dropping it, don't be in a, I'm not in a huge rush to do it. Um, when they start having problems, stop retrieving so you don't con continue to form those habits. But because she delivered well, I encouraged it. So if you watch any of our old videos with her, when she comes in, I'm not in a hurry to take it away from her. Don't pull it away from them right away. Let, let them have it. Let them hold on to it. Share it with them because what's going to happen, I want her to settle in. What, what I don't want is I don't want them to get in a habit of coming to me and thinking he's going to take it away from me right away. I want them to understand we're sharing this thing. So early on, before you get to this part, don't be quick to take away bumpers. No. And you'll hear, I'm pretty positive, and I think if you've ever watched me training dogs before, you'll know I, I keep pretty positive with stuff. I will raise my tone enough to get what I need as far as a result. And my hope is I don't have to go any further than that. So her little excitement level right now is great. I'm not going to discourage it, but if it gets to the point where she's bubbling over, I, you'll hear my tone go, ah, 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 no. And you'll see a response out of her. But then my, my objective is go back soft, go back soft. So I'm going to go for the second one. Hold, hold, hold. One thing I don't like is her hiding her head and wiggling her head all over. But you know what? For the second rep, I'm just having her hold it. Hold, 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 hold. Hold, 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 dead, dead. Good girl. Now that was a real good one. And when I start doing this with this, I'm going to forget about the camera and just work on the dog. So that you're going to see what we really are working on. But you could see there, she was mouthing it a little bit. That's okay. I'd rather have her doing that than dropping it. So... If she was fussing and fighting to drop it, I'd be wrestling it right back in and holding it. Ah, ah, ah. I got to keep her. She's got a real high level of excitement, so we got to keep her calm. That's what I'm looking for. Hold. No hesitation to take it. Hold. But she's so excited, she's really turning the head. So I'm going to start steadying up her chin right now. Hold. The more I touch her, the more stimulated she gets. So I'm going to be careful not to touch her too much. Hold. Hold. She can't duck out. Hold. She's just squirmy. Hold. Hold. Dead. 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 In the background, you keep hearing me say hold. 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 Hold means nothing to her. She doesn't know what it means. But she's going to hear me say it every time it's in her mouth. So every time it's in her mouth, she's going to hear me say it real soothingly. Hold, 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 over and over and over. If you've ever heard us talk about doing a hunt command, it's the same idea. Repetition over and over and over again while she's doing something. She's going to associate it later with it. 
But that hold conditioning, that hold command is going to make sense later when she comes in to deliver stuff. And I'm going to say it the exact same way, and she's going to go right back to this moment when she's on the table holding on. Hold. 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 Now, over the next week or two, this is going to get so much more polished, and the wiggling's not going to be there, the turning of the head's not going to be there. But for day one, I'm real happy. Hold. Hold. Old, big, good girl. Okay, that's it. So that was that didn't take very long. So don't give me, I won't let you give me an excuse that it takes too long to do this. It didn't take me very long. Now the next thing I'm going to do because I've got her here, uh, Ellie has not done this yet either. So I unhook her, and what I'm going to do is I'm actually going to take Kimber down. You know, Ellie, Ellie, and I'm going to put Ellie up on the table. And show you the difference. Now, Ellie's never been up on this either. So I'm going to tether her in. And I'm going to let her do it. And I'm going to do it quick with her. Now, I think we'll see a difference with Ellie. Because Ellie is a much calmer dog. See? See? You can just see her personality is a lot less squirmy than, than uh, Kimber is. But let's see how she does. We're going to do the exact same thing because she needs it too. Now both these dogs are going to be gun dogs, bird dogs. Ellie's going to do sheds and tracking. Kimber's just upland and waterfall. So let's see. Now Ellie's got a real nice delivery too. Let's see how, how she takes the, this dowel very nice and gently. Look at that. Good. Hold. 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 If I have to, I'll be right here to make sure it doesn't come out. Hold. But look at the difference in the body language of these dogs. So they're sisters. Hold. So don't let anyone tell you that you train one dog one way. These two are as close as you can find. Hold. Genetically. Did. Did. Good. And do you see how easy she releases? So there's a good example of two different dogs in a matter of three minutes that are completely different. That was her first time ever doing that. So easy? Yeah, it was with her. I've had some where I literally wrestled it into them. So we're going to do it again. Hold. Look how nice she takes that. Hold. Again, this I think it has to do with up until now. She's a year old. Up until now, when she brought bumpers back, we shared them with her. We'd encourage her to hold on to it. I'd bring her up and I'd hold under her chin like this and tell her how good she was and let her hold, 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 hold. Dead. Dead. Now she's clamping a little bit. But that's okay. Good. Now, why in the world would I put pressure on a little dog like this? Why would I pinch on her? Why would I put negative pressure? To I don't want... Look at the tail on her right now. Nothing about this is negative. Guess what? Nothing about retrieving should be negative. Hold. Hold. I love this little dog. She's just got a great, great attitude. That is beautiful. Hold. Did. Did. And I'll help her a little bit. I'll put, I, when I'm pinching, I'm just pinching on her lips a little bit to get her to open up. But they're, they're literally wanting to hold on to it. So these dogs have really nice natural hold. If they didn't, I'd have to roll these gums up, force that thing in there, and then hold it like this. Hold, 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 hold. Now, I don't have to do that with her because she's got a pretty natural hold. Now, the reality is, guys, is she's going to drop it eventually. Ah, 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 ah. You can see right there, she's getting a little loose, starting to chomp, so I don't want to push it too long. Don't go so long that they drop it. End with success. Did. Did. One more with her, and then we're going to be good. So, now, again, this is, this is completely live. So, I forget who it was, but someone made a comment and said, we'd rather see you do it live because... Now I know it's not, you didn't do a warm-up, you didn't do something to make him look good. Because Dan looked pretty good when we did it in that series. I'm not, I'm not BSing you. It was legit, but 
this is completely live, so hold, hold. Look how nice that little dog holds. Did, did, did. Good, good. So there, I don't know, probably 15 minutes, and I got two dogs done. So the very first day of hold conditioning with them. Now we're going to go through the entire process with them. And with Dan, I only filmed eight days, and then I, I, got, I got lazy. I quit filming them. And, but I showed those last eight days. So if you want to go back and see Dan, Dan was a little bit different story. He fought it a little bit harder in the beginning. Um, but then what you'll see is how Dan did it. Now you're going to see how Kimber does it. Now you're going to see how Ellie does it and the differences in these two sisters. And then the other thing is, is we're going to go further. At day eight, we weren't done with Dan. Then we took him down on the table, off the table. We worked him on the ground. We did all sorts of stuff. We changed um, objects. We made little retrieves. And we transitioned it all the way through. That's our plan with these guys. So it's going to be an accountability thing on my part. I'm going to have to see it through because if I don't, I expect you guys probably to send me a message and go, where's that little live video you're talking about? But we're going to test this out on hold. It's following up with a sequence that we did on purpose um, by showing a videoed one. And now we're going to add the element of, of doing it live. So thank you for watching. Um, can you have a bird dog and have a same dog shed hunt too? Absolutely. Different object, same hunt. Um, so if you've got a dog that quarters and casts and flushes, flushes and retrieves, you've got a bird dog. If you've got a dog that quarters and casts, finds something and makes a retrieve, just doesn't flush it, you've got a shed dog. So we're going to switch objects. We're going to teach dogs that feathered, bump, feathered bumpers equal retrieve, uh, antler shape equals retrieve, different scents. Hell, my tracking dogs, well, you got a pheasant dog. I think you can convert a pheasant dog. You got to have a pheasant dog track cripples. You can you can cross them to train to find wounded deer. Tracking's tracking. So I can get dogs to do um, the crossover, and it's not something that's separated by time. You train it all at the same time. It's the same processes. It's the same skill sets. It's just different items. So yes, use the bird dogs to shed hunt with. Use the shed dogs to bird hunt with. I think it'll help you. I think it'll help you. Easy little girl. Uh, make them better at those different skill sets. So we, we've we got Ellie here is doing all that. Um, Taylor, the White Tails Unlimited dog, does all that. Hell, they do, they do all that, and then they're therapy dogs. They go to a school here locally and work with kids that have autism and different disabilities. So don't, don't think that your little hunting dogs, that's all they do. Um, Matt, our lab does both really well. Absolutely. A Angie's been to our workshops. Um, Angie's got a great little dog drifter. Um, we, we, Angie and I have missed connecting, um, a couple times, but we're going to go through hold conditioning with Drifter. This is a good start. This will be a good start, Angie, for you to be able to follow along. Um, but we, we can do that with all of them. So now what we're going to do is we're going to put these guys up. Training doesn't stop. This isn't all we do. I still work on obedience. I still work on foundational stuff. Just no retrieving during this time. So if you start this process, stop the retrieves. Because what I don't want to do is work real hard on a hold condition and deliver to hand and then go work on retrieves and have them do the bad habit over and over and over again. Because you're just you're pulling both directions. And so stop retrieving, get a good solid delivery, then go back to retrieving. So if this goes well and we have a, a good response from this, and it, I've got ideas of some other things that I want to do with you guys where we can actually walk through live with these dogs. And my hope is that this is going to add some value to what we're doing. Um, so uh, if you've got questions, put them up. If you've got comments, put them up there. I love reading them. It makes me feel like someone's actually watching. So uh, thanks, and we will be back tomorrow with these guys.